is suffering. For instance, uh, the generation, I'm 47 years old, but many of my friends are younger than me. My friend Joanne Sarajeva, for example, I brought her to many hospitals in the area. She was in very bad pain and in need of surgery and had various things wrong with her, as many people do. And every time I brought her to the local hospital, in fact, I brought her over here to Chilton Hospital in Pompton Plains, and I heard the doctors um, behind the emergency doors saying, oh, let's just try to get rid of pain medicine. She is only on partial Medicaid. Um, I don't really know what partial Medicaid is, but it means you don't get much medical coverage or concern, obviously, because the doctor came in, and I forget his name, I think, oh yeah, Dr. Grossman gave her some pain pills and told her to leave. What she really needed was surgery, and, and um, she did finally get it after I helped her become a student at William Patterson College, because to go to college in America means you must be covered by health care, and you're able to get, it, get a student loan and finally get covered and get the surgery that should be needed. I brought a lot of other um, young people only in their 20s. These, this is the future of America, and they can't even get antibiotics, you know, $80, you know. In fact, before I move on to what I'm going to discuss today about the U.S. Supreme Court this, um, deciding on whether Obama's health care plan to cover everybody in America is going to go forward or not, and if it will cover illegal aliens what, and what have you. I also would like to say in my own town in Bloomingdale, New Jersey, there is an, an entire homeless community comprised of 18 to 30 year old. They live under the highway bridge down Patterson Hamburg Turnpike in Riverdale. They live under the Butler Museum and in the, um, all those train cars that are sitting over in Butler, New Jersey, the next town over from me, like a block down the street. There um, is an entire community in the woods. Um, right across the street from me, behind Quick Check, I found people I went to high school with sleeping. Um, people can't get jobs, they can't get, and they definitely cannot get any help there. Um, so, let's see. Um, several month, months ago, District U.S. District Judge Henry F. Hudson of Virginia struck down one of the three central provisions of U.S. President Barack Obama's new Obamacare law, stating Obamacare is, quote, unconstitutional. So what can President Obama do to save his uh, social, kind of socialized health care plan that will cover, require everybody in America has health care and is covered by health care, which I think is something wonderful. It's something that will ensure that every U.S. citizen and everybody in America, and even possibly illegal aliens, will get health care, that no one's going to drop dead. And, that I, and when I went to school in New York City, like, I'm not going to see scenes like this anymore. I'm not going to get off the bus at the Port Authority, and I'm not going to see people lying there half dead, and people pretending they don't know, just walking over to people, moaning, just like sitting there starving to death and sickly, and just going on the way to work, like these people don't even exist. They're like dying or stabbed right inside the Port Authority, and the people pretend they don't exist. It's disgusting and disgraceful for America to go on like this. Obamacare has to be passed. And the younger generation, that I'm trying to take the doctors and to the local hospitals, should not be refused care because, you know what, not even illegal aliens are refused health care. America's public is paying for illegal aliens that are coming in the country from Mexico, and they're sitting right next to me at St. Joseph's Hospital, at all the local hospitals and children, they're getting health care. And U.S. tax dollars are paying for it. But when a real U.S. citizen, like my friend Joanne, a 23-year-old, or a college student, you know, I bring them to a hospital. Well, college students, like I said, aforementioned, are covered. But when I bring a 22-year-old that doesn't have a job, or lives at home and their parents can't, can't keep them on their insurance policy till they're 26, and I bring a 21-year-old to uh, St. Joe's in Patterson, New Jersey, I, I wait 10 hours to find out that, um, you know, the doctors won't see them, they won't take care of this 21-year-old, and these are the people that are going to be running the country when I'm dead in the ground. Um, and the Republicans want to try to stop and put an end to Obamacare because they state the Republican that it's unconstitutional to require Americans to purchase anything, including health care. They'd rather have America's future posterity and 21 or 30-year-olds 
drop dead because they can't afford health care. I think this is shameful, and this is why I will never vote for a Republican. Um, in his ruling, uh, this judge, Henry E. Hudson of Virginia, stated, quote, an individual's personal decision to purchase or decline purchase of health insurance or anything else from a private provider is beyond the historical reach of the U.S. Constitution, end quote. And he continued, quote, no specifically constitutional authority exists to mandate the purchase of health care insurance, end quote. He then can, uh, Judge Henry uh, E. Hudson of Virginia continued to say, quote, Despite the laudable intentions of Congress in enacting a comprehensive and transformative health care regime, comma, the, legislat the legislative process must still operate within con the U.S. constitutional boundaries. Hudson also stated, quote, Salutary goals and, cre and creating and drafting have never been sufficient as far as of the U.S. Constitution, end quote. Although this might be true, Judge Hen Henry Hudson of Virginia, there is no known position, there is no known provision yet in the United States Constitution giving either the state or the federal government in America the right to tell American citizens how to spend their money or that they have to buy this and they can't buy that. Yet, Presently, though, we live in a capitalist society, and thus far in American history, a person's individual right over his private property and what they're going to spend their money on has been protected as sacred holy law in America. But this may not be the case in the future, and this is why. If the Supreme Court rules that Obamacare is unconstitutional owing to its mandate making it mandatory American citizens buy something, health insurance, President Obama, the House, and the Senate may propose to amend the United States Constitution entirely by instituting uh, a new constitutional amendment which could read something to the effect of, quote, under the condition, the current conditions in America, the social health and welfare of the many outweighs the want of the few. Therefore, in this time of history, the federal government in, America, in, in the United States of America can make it ma mandatory under such amendment and conditions that all American citizens are mandated to buy health care so that all American citizens may be provided this basic human right of access to medical care, unquote. That I wrote myself, being a student and scholar in human rights. I see no reason why the United States Constitution cannot be amended to include uh, covering the basic human right that all American citizens have a bit of basic human right, um, civil, civil, civic political human rights, as well as social economic human rights, to things such as health care, food, work, and um, things, basic human rights of that nature, medical care. Of course, it won't be an easy task to amend the United States Constitution, but it is very possible. To amend the United States Constitution, one of the following methods are used to first introduce a new, a new amendment. The first um, thing that takes place, item one, two-thirds of both House of Congress and uh, both Houses of Congress must vote to propose the amendment to go forward, or two-thirds of the state legislatures have to ask Congress to call the National Convention to propose such an amendment. This method has never been used in, throughout U.S. history so far, up to date. Then, to ratify, um, implement the new constitutional amendment into the U.S. Constitution, the following must occur. One, three-fourths of the state legislatures, all making bodies, must approve the amendment. Two, ratifying conventions in three-fourths three of the states in the United States of America must approve the new amendment. This method was only used once to ratify the 21st Amendment of America, which repealed prohibition, which if you don't know what it is, prohibition was, um, at, at, during the prohibition period in America, alcohol was made illegal. Of course, it didn't work, and um, people put it on the black market left and right and made a fortune. Um, and finally, people were allowed to buy alcohol again. This is why so many people in America say the war on drugs isn't working, 
18 and 22 year olds can't go to college if they had three felony arrests for drugs. They can never vote, they can never drive. Um, they, uh, it just, the war on drugs just isn't working. When people want it, they're going to do it. If you're addicted to it, you're going to get it. And um, drugs should be legal. And I personally do agree with that because when you do it, when you're doing an illegal drug, what do you, when you commit a crime, when, when somebody commits a crime, the crime is defined in America, you're offending the state. In what way are you offending anything in the state, of any state in the United States of America, by smoking pot marijuana or doing cocaine? You're only hurting yourself. And I strongly feel it's an individual choice whether you want to hurt yourself. Because I do feel it greatly offends God as an Orthodox Christian to abuse the body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, in my religious belief in the Orthodox Christian Church. However, as in this, as a secular lawmaker, it's their your duty to keep church and state separate in America, and by doing that, um, it, already I think 13 states ratified, made it okay that self-assisted suicide is legal. So self-assisted suicide, if you can kill yourself in Oregon, Washington, and California, and New York State, and several other states, I'm not sure exactly which 13 or so, um, ratified that law, making it legal to kill yourself if you want to. But if self-assisted suicide is legal in America in 13 or more or 30 states, <laughs> Don't tell me the American government cares about my, how many brain cells I'm killing if I smoke a marijuana cigarette. Um, let me continue then. Um, to ratify a new amendment making a, a health care mandatory, the purchase of health care mandatory for everybody in America, three fourths, that's three quarters of every state lawmaking body must approve it. Um, this was used to ratify the 21st Amendment, which made alcohol legal again during the Prohibition period in America. Amending in the United States Constitution was never an easy process. Uh, for example, the, the Superior Court states that ratification must be within, quote, a reasonable time period after after the um, after the proposal. My oh, excuse me. I um, something obviously is wrong here. Don't. Start now. <laughs> um, anyway, it, a reasonable time period um, must be set after the initial uh, amendment is is proposed. Uh, beginning with the 18th amendment, is, it was customary always for Congress to set a definite period for ratification. In the case of the 18th, 20, 21st, 22nd amendments, the period was set for seven years to ratify it and to institute 